Hello everyone. Uh, this is a a long waited uh, stream. <laughs> I don't know. Can you hear me? Well, this is a, a test uh, stream that I would like to do today uh, because I decided to go back to streams and I need something uh, to to run just to to be sure that uh, everything is working fine. Yeah, about two years. Hello, C2, 77. Hello, JMA80. How are you doing, guys? Please help me here with the sound and all the stuff uh, to be sure that everything is going uh, well and uh, everything is working as uh, good as possible because with all this stuff, always we are going to have issues. So let me and know if uh, my voice is fine right now you mean uh, Chito, you mean the volume from uh, myself or from the music because uh, right now i have uh, lowered a little bit the volume of the music so that you can hear me bit low okay let me see if I can increase how about now I think it's it should be too loud music is lower you are higher but a bit low in general uh, now is better my voice I think that the I see the levels on uh, OBS, but I'm not sure how this comes to you because uh, I changed the uh, laptop that I am using. Hello, Falcon. Welcome to the stream. Uh, I changed the, uh, recently the laptop that I'm using for this kind of things and I have no idea how it works with the stream. And since this is a comeback stream, uh, you have to, to bear with me so that I can uh, make everything uh, as uh, well as uh, possible, to, to work as well as possible. Uh, Falcon, I was saying uh, earlier to everyone here that this is a test stream to see that uh, uh, if everything is working fine and uh, what I need to, to fix and uh, configure. Because I'm planning to get back to streams and uh, it's been a while, I don't remember how I was doing, uh, what I was doing and all this stuff. Uh, and uh, yeah, it is, I'm excited about that, so I wanted to, to jump on with a, a test stream to see how things are working. How are you doing guys? Happy Friday as well, because uh, we are... Uh, almost in a uh, weekend so how are things about uh, for you um, for today i don't have anything specific to show you i have some things in mind uh, but as i as i said uh, this is a test stream mainly so I don't know how long it will last. If you, if you join me on chatting and have a discussion, that will take long. Otherwise, uh, I will have uh, to show you a few things that I am planning for the future, and uh, we will see how it, it will go. Amiga Gamer, welcome, welcome to the stream. Thank you so much. Um, as you can see, my, my screen right now is from uh, my Amiga OS 4 uh, system. Um, I have a couple of things of my personal projects that I, I could uh, show you. And things that I am uh, working on. And um, so that you can get an idea about that. And then uh, we can jump on on some uh, stuff that I'm planning for the for the for the stream. So let me close that. Uh, this uh, the last months uh, 
a lot of months I was I, I'm mainly working on uh, two major uh, projects of mine one of them is I, I guess you all know the iGame I did a, uh, one more uh, release a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago that increased a lot the, the speed of the iGame when it loads on any system and uh, I also shared a blog post on my coffee page uh, about how uh, I worked on that uh, Uh, Falcon, no, it is not uh, about OS 4. It's actually about. I'm going to show you a couple of things on iGame and another application that I'm working on, the Light Excel. Uh, you probably remember that from uh, my older streams, but I, um, I'm pretty close to have a new release for that, and I have uh, made a, a few uh, uh, really useful. Uh, uh, changes that I would like to, to show you and then I'm going to show you some uh, plans that I have uh, for the future streams and what I would like to to present here and have discussion on that actually um, how many of you uh, are using iGame? Uh, I devote a lot of time on, on that uh, last year I did uh, around uh, 10 uh, different uh, releases some of them were only for fixing bugs, but uh, there were a lot of um, uh, new features and a lot of um, improvements. Uh, so, hey Vince AG, welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Um, I game. So iGame is, in case you don't know that, is um, a front end for WSD Load. Uh, WSD Load is a way to have uh, many games and demos installed on your um, system and in your hard drive and then with a click, a double click, you can start uh, uh, and execute them and play or have fun. Amica Gamer says I need to update my iGame. I, I, I tried some months back, but the update cost duplication. Maybe I start from scratch, but I have my games in categories. Uh, yeah, I would suggest you to start uh, from scratch because the iGame has. Let me show you here. It has a, a file here that is called Games List uh, CSV and that changed uh, recently and uh, probably if you have an older version of that you might have issues I did my best to support the older versions and do the transi transition uh, without you having to do anything but uh, sometimes depends on the file and depends on the version of iGame that created it uh, there might be some uh, errors in there so uh, I changed a lot of things because I needed to have uh, some information for the new list here and also for the changes that I did with uh, the select boxes like this one that uh, selects uh, the chipset that is supported uh, by the games or the demos. That means that you can filter uh, the games for example right now you don't need to have different lists for the Aga games, uh, different lists for the ECS. You can do the uh, filtering like that, selecting Aga here, and you have all the games that uh, use uh, are made uh, for that chipset. And these, um, all the filters can work together. For example, if you want to find uh, first-person shooters that are supporting Aga, you can do that. If you want to find, uh, let's say, Action Shooter 2D, uh, you can have that. And if you want to change the to be the OCS only, you can get all the OCS only uh, games. The 
One of the previous uh, releases that I did about iGame, uh, I introduced a, a new file uh, that needs to be inside the, the games or the demos. And that, let me show you here. Uh, for example, if I get into uh, any folder, uh, there is a file named iGame.data and uh, or data whatever you want and um, that file includes some information uh, a proper name of the game or the demo the year that this was uh, released released by which company or a developer or whatever the chipset the genre and uh, the players uh, the number of players that it supports um, but also this file uh, has some other uh, parameters like the executable, the arguments and uh, the ID in the Lemon Amiga uh, website, the uh, uh, website, the uh, HOL uh, website and the poet. The poet is for demos only, but the other two are um, for games. And I will explain how, this, how I plan this to be used. Um, so, if you have in your collection these files in every game, iGame uh, reads them and all the games take the proper uh, title and the proper genre. And uh, after you uh, provide the repositories and uh, do a simple scan, uh, you have all the games in their categories. Yeah, database of games, yeah, exactly, Falcon. But instead of this coming with the iGame and instead of uh, someone uh, having to maintain all this stuff, uh, having that in, in every folder of every game, um, that is uh, usable by other programs if someone wants to support it. And um, uh, it can be uh, maintained by the community. Um, having said that, this is, uh, there is a, uh, a, a collection for all the retro plays. I, I think you know, I guess you know the retro plays uh, collection with games and demos. Um, a guy from the AIB, uh, his nickname is M MRV2K, uh, he created a collection with the screenshots of the games like that and also he has the iGame data uh, included so if someone downloads the retro plays uh, collection and downloads that package with the screenshots that he prefers uh, and copy them over uh, the only thing that you need to do is to uh, run a scan inside the game for that collection and everything is in the proper uh, place the only thing that is not possible to be done is to have them marked as favorite your favorite games uh, because this is uh, objective for for everyone so uh, this is um, a better way to to have everything set up for automatically for uh, the users uh, jma says is it possible to add non whd load games Absolutely. The, the iGame has, a, I think, since version 2 and maybe before, it has a, a, a menu item. At the, the first menu uh, has an app game and that opens this window. Now, you can select here, let's say, uh, have games. Um, 68k let's see the dot xerox you can select the select uh, the executable you can write here dot xerox the title that you want this to to have and the genre for this yeah the the list is huge because we have a, a lot of games uh, in them right so let's say this um, what this
Let's say it's goblin. Oh no. <laughs> Let's say it's a simulator space. We don't care. And uh, clicking OK, this is added in the in the list. And uh, if you double click on that, this should be started. But here crashes because it starts in the uh, OS4. Let me try and start it now in the emulator and you are going to see that it's going to run just fine uh, this is the UI emulator that comes with Amiga OS 4 right and you can quit of course that window is missing a lot of uh, extra information for the uh, for this list of the year of the release the players, the number of players, and all this stuff. Um, this is something that I'm going, I'm planning to uh, add in the future. But what else you can do? If you come here to the, I have a, the Sandarox, let's say, okay. And here it has, it doesn't have any other um, uh, file, and I'm going to add here the NI game data file. Let me get one from another. Let's say the Prisless. And I'm going to rename it. Have in mind that I'm uh, now in Sandarox, which also is not a WS load. Okay, so I'm going to take that file, change here and say Sanda Rocks. I think it was 2021, let's say, by Nivrik uh, OCS ECS. Let's say it is action, player one and I don't know these ideas for now ok, save it so this file has that information about that game ok so if I go here and add in iGame and add one more repository which is of course the fo folder that I have the 68 games with all these folders Although that these games are not WS the load. So I add it in the repositories, close, and I am doing a scan uh, of these repositories. As you can see below, it scans everything right now, okay? Um, and it scans also the retro place, the other uh, uh, repository that I had. So what I am expecting this happen, to happen is, because I have the iGame data, to find that game and being able to execute it. The only thing that I'm, I think I forgot is here that I should have Santa Rocks, which is the name of the executable. So let's give it a, a minute. Uh, the idea behind that is you might have a collection of games uh, that are not WS the load games and uh, by having these files there uh, and scan those games you can add them into the um, list inside a game and having them in the uh, genres uh, assigned in genres and uh, being able to be selected and uh, you don't have to go and manually uh, add them this means that if someone creates a package for this kind of games um, this is going to be easy to to be used let me see if it is here i 
thing it didn't add it because I don't have the executable. Let me do again a scan. I hope that it is not broken and I didn't know that. <laughs> so uh, it might be broken. We will see. Um, so that's one of the the features that I added uh, in the uh, in the i game. Now uh, I I also changed all the stuff uh, for the select boxes to have them in different places and be um, able to to use all of them. For example, you can do select the, your favorite games that are aga and that they are fps something like that or by the top of the select box to to choose those that you never played that are fps and you can have them there are a, a lot of uh, i have a lot of ideas of uh, adding stuff like uh, I don't know if you would like that something like um, choose randomly a game and start it maybe that uh, would be um, a feature that uh, would be interesting so as you can see here Santa Rocks is added with the gear that I added, the players, the number of players, the screenshot, because I have the iGame IFF, the screenshot, so if I double click that, it starts the game. Uh, that's one extra way to, to have the compilations, uh, the packages, and all this stuff, and when you use them, imagine that you have uh, an Amiga with all these games, and then you take a backup of your hard disk, you format it, and then you want them all back. If you have those games in there, with those files, you just scan them in iGame and you have everything uh, ready for you to use. Or if someone gives you that collection with the games, um, a list of games that are freely available, you can have them in iGame uh, without doing one by one, adding them, selecting the genre, and all this stuff. Now, um, if you remember, if I go to a game and then I select properties, we have right now this uh, window that uh, gives you the title of the game, the genre, Okay, and uh, if it is your favorite, select if it is favorite or not, if it is hidden or not, uh, how many times you played it, the slave path, and the tool types of the slave, in case you want to, to change them. Um, now I'm working on a different version of this window. Um, let me show you, I, I have created a, a mock-up for that which is in my application programming uh, open view so the new window will be like this um, it will it will uh, help in um, giving the uh, information about the game to the user, so you can use it to see when this is was released, by whom, what are the uh, the chipsets that it supports, and all this stuff. Some of this information is already here, okay. But uh, here you have everything. You can still select if it is your favorite or it is hidden. You can change the uh, genre of the game and you can also change the title as uh, you used to do uh, with the old version. Let me open the old version to have it be 
inside it. So, uh, if you can see, there are uh, a few differences. Uh, one thing, we are not going, uh, I will not have this uh, select box, this, sorry, text box that has the uh, tool types. But don't be afraid, I'm not going to remove it uh, completely from the IK. Uh, this is going to go to another uh, window. But uh, this uh, window is more like, um, the purpose of this window is more like to see information about this game. Nothing else. And make some changes, maybe. That's where I'm going to have these uh, links here uh, for the uh, HOL website, Hall of Light, for the Lemon Amiga and for the uh, And the uh, idea of that is that you can click on them uh, and open this website uh, into your browser. The user can uh, set up the browser from the system. Uh, it's going to use the open URL uh, library, which can be found on Aminet. And uh, uh, you can select whatever browser you want to visit that uh, website. Uh, and this is going to be used to find information, to find manuals if you want, uh, screenshots, to see more screenshots, to see uh, some of these websites have um, uh, information about um, passwords and things like that, how to pass uh, logs and things like that. Uh, and also they have reviews, so if there is a game that you don't know quite well, uh, you can uh, use it. Uh, now, the classic Amigas do not have, those websites are not working quite well on classic Amiga. For example, if I go with I browse here to Lemon Amiga, uh, .com, .com. It has some uh, issues to see pro uh, properly the information, right? Uh, let's select again this one. But it is possible to see something. It's not the information is there, right? And uh, this is a review, I think. Let's see something else. This one is still a review. No. You have all the screenshots here, uh, you have the information about who did what, the people for the graphics and all this stuff. Uh, reviews in uh, magazines, quite interesting if you if you like to see how the magazines uh, evaluated each game or a demo or whatever. Uh, the score and I think here it is, there are the reviews. So if you have a, a fast Amiga and you are able to uh, see those websites uh, properly. Also, don't forget that there is uh, AmiFox Ami available for the classic Amigas. That uh, I don't know if you tried that, uh, can be used for uh, visiting uh, more complex uh, websites. Uh, so, this is a way to get uh, information. And uh, that's how uh, the, the window is going to change probably in the next uh, version, the next update that I'm currently working. Um, I don't know how this, all this stuff sounds to you. Is it uh, interesting at all? Do you see that useful or would you like to see something else on that? Some extra information? I would like, for example, to have here Falcon 11 says, yes, I have one from A38 and is usable also on the 0650. Yeah, that's where I got this uh, box. It's, it's great. I still need to to get uh, deep into Abifox because it's, it sounds pretty good uh, as an application. I haven't tried that quite well uh, yet. But it's, uh, 
it's very nice application for a classic Amiga. Now, if you have, even if you have a vampire or a Python, it's much better to have that those websites like that. Uh, thank you, JMA. I, I'm glad you like it. Thanks, uh, Chitu, 77. Um, now, what I would like to have as well in this uh, window was the overall uh, score that these websites uh, give uh, to games, but this might be something that changes frequently, so someone needs to have all these uh, files changed all the time. The I was looking in the past if there were if there was a way to get that information from the websites in real time, for example, uh, open that window and get all that information from the web and uh, present them in that, inside that window. It could be doable, but that requires from the website to provide that information and uh, neither Lemon Amica nor the uh, Hall of Light give that information, unfortunately. But uh, for the demos, we could uh, I could add some uh, extra information. For example, uh, a demo presented in a specific uh, demo party and got that uh, place in the contest and it was first or second or whatever. If that is some kind of information that uh, people would find useful. But I think that if you get into the website, you can see all this stuff. The iGame, it doesn't auto-update. Uh, I plan to add something for the Amiga OS 4 because Amiga OS 4 has the AMI update, right? And uh, this, uh, this application here. And, <coughs> excuse me, uh, I could add the the game, the i game to be updated, but for uh, OS three, this is a little bit difficult. Amiga Gamer says WS the load site has a dedicated slave ID for each game. Maybe this could be used to get some info. Yeah, the slave. Yeah, you are right. Yeah, I will have a look on that. I will have a look on that. Uh, the thing is that they have the ID for the slave that I guess it is something that I can get from the slave itself. Um, but I'm not sure what is happening when the, uh, the slave is updated on their website, but it is not updated on the user side. You know what I mean? I have the older slave because the newer doesn't work for me quite well. Uh, and uh, I might not be able to get that information. I prefer, you see, that solution of having these iGame data files, that is usable, uh, possible not the links, but it's usable even to those that do not have uh, their Amica on, uh, online, right? So I want to have a solution that supports these people as well. The game, the name, the the slave name stays the same. Mm. The thing, is, okay, yeah, I will have a look on that Amiga Gamer. Thanks for uh, saying that to me because I'm looking ways to to find how I can give more information for the games to the user. Uh, in the past, I would like to have something that scans all the games. Um, and uh, do the updates of the slaves automatically without you having to, you know, uh, double click and a slave start the game and then see that uh, you need to update it. Or at least have a way to see that these uh, games have uh, updates and do something with that. That was an idea that I had in the past, but I don't know if this should be inside a game or not. And um, also, I have one more uh, thing to share with you. I'm, I was taking the... A lot of people asked how can I have a demos list 
and have a games list as well, right? And uh, mostly right now what they are doing is to create separate uh, installations of iGame. One for the demos, one for the games, one, I don't know, for the CD32 games or something like that. Uh, so, uh, I came up with that uh, mock-up of how I could make this more useful to, to the user, uh, to solve that issue and uh, have uh, a way inside a game to switch from one playlist to the other. So you have one installation of a game and you can select, uh, I want now to, to see the uh, demos or the games, whatever you want. And that, uh, when you select that, everything refreshes and get uh, the new list. So the currently, if you have repositories, you see you have one, uh, let's say, collection of uh, paths, one repository that has uh, these paths. Okay, you can't have multiple of them. The idea here is to, to change to this window, but this is probably going to uh, happen on version 3 of iGame because a lot of breaking changes are going to, to come and it's a, it's a huge uh, amount of work. The idea here is to have collections, let's say this first line collection that has uh, paths, different paths. Falcon says that he has always separately one I game for games, one for demos. It means two X tiers. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the files are not huge, so with uh, systems with uh, a lot of gigabytes in uh, hard disk, it's not a big issue to have, for example, here, my I game right now is not even a megabyte of uh, size, right? So it's uh, 950 kilobytes. So it's not a big deal to have different versions. Actually on my systems, uh, usually I have many different versions because I'm doing checks and tests and uh, whatever. Um, but this is something that uh, a few people uh, asked for, so I was it is interesting to have it, in my opinion, to have it in iGame. Now, if this is going to ever be used, I don't know, but I think that is a, a valuable um, change that I would like to include. So the, the idea here is you have all the collections. Let's say the first one is uh, uh, games, the second one is demos, the third one is CD30 magazines or whatever. Amica Gamer says, I just looked at some examples. The format seems to be game name.lh matches game name.html info page. Example uh, challenger.lh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ah, and have that. Uh, yeah, okay. I will have a look, Amica Gamer, on that. Demos and games in different subfolder. Yeah. You, you do the same thing, of course. And uh, a lot of uh, distributions, Amiga OS distributions, like the Amikit or the uh, classic uh, Amiga Workbench, I think, they are doing the same, um, they have the same approach on the different versions of, uh, different installations of iGame. Um, so the the, each collection is going to be separated and when you select one of them you can add different parts um, you can click here to add a new uh, collection double click on that to type the title of the collection that you would like that that uh, have in mind that this is not working now because this is a mock-up just to have an idea and also, I, I plan to have a way to select which one is the default. The default is going to be the one that is going to be used when you start iGame. And uh, please tell me if the sound is fine for you, okay? Because I don't know how loud it is or not. Um, 
So you can select the default collection. Every collection has multiple uh, paths. You can add a path or remove a path. You can have here a way to select the, the, the folder like you do right here with that. Something like that, it's pretty similar. And then a way to save it or cancel it because you might make changes and then change your mind. So you might cancel it and all these changes will be lost. Um, and as soon as you have the collections, my plan is to have an extra menu item. Uh, maybe after the actions, a new menu uh, that has all the collections there. So if you add a new collection, this menu is going to be updated and uh, you will have all the collections there. And changing a, a collection, everything updates inside that game, like load, uh, all the, the lists are going to be uh, changing, uh, all the lists are going to be updated, the uh, genres here are going to be updated, these select boxes also, everything. So this is one thing that has a lot of uh, changes because even the you see here we have the repos.prefs uh, file which is just a text uh, file with some paths uh, even that needs to be changed because I need to have collection with uh, correlated paths to that collection and all the stuff I need to find a way how to do it without making huge files or whatever and keep that uh, usable and fast even on um, a plain 68 uh, machine that someone might have with a 68010 and uh, 3000 <laughs> games in there so I'm, I, I haven't decided yet what the format of these files might be it might be CSV files, it might be uh, JSON files, I, I am not sure yet. It might be multiple files for each collection, a, a file for each collection. So you have here um, a games collection, a demos collection file, and depending what collection you, you load, loads the, the specific file. I need to, to give a good thought of that. And uh, yeah, that's one more um, big uh, feature that I'm planning for the, the, the next, very next uh, uh, version of my game. How does that sound to you? Any, any comments on that? Uh, any ideas? Are you going to use it? <laughs> Um, that's about I game. That's all about I game. And uh, yeah, uh, I would like to show you some cool stuff that I implemented on uh, Light Excel now. This unfortunately is only for um, Amiga OS 4 users. Uh, light Excel is this, this one. Let me change. Yeah. Light Excel. Uh, I think this is a little bit uh, dark for you. Let me change it. And restart it. Cool. Light Excel is an editor for uh, developers, but you can use it for whatever you, you want, uh, even for changing uh, any file, the any text file that you are working on, or something, uh, documentation, or um, uh, Whatever, read your uh, 
startup sequence or whatever. So let me open something here like the this file or some code. This file it has uh, color syntaxing for many different uh, um, uh, programming languages. You can have multiple tabs of, uh, up here and you can move them to the different places, for example, like that or here. I don't know, does it come quite well on, the, on your screen? Um, and it is pretty, pretty fast. You can have them in full screen if you want with a, a key combination. Um, as you can see, it is minimal on things in the window. You don't have too many things. Uh, let me change maybe the color scheme to something like that. You can change your themes. You can have a different theme if you are uh, programming in in a dark room so you can have something like that that's my preferred one uh, that's what i'm using um, and there are a lot of other uh, themes that you can uh, select mega gamer says i would love an os4 machine to play with but i cannot justify cost i have it for fsui with uh, the qmu plugin that is great because uh, QMU is working quite well. I have that on one of my uh, laptops and uh, one of the previous versions that I released for the Light Excel was possible to work just fine on QMU so you can use it there. Uh, it looks and moves is, uh, pretty well. Yeah, yeah Falcon. and. Um, I have that also on uh, an older machine of mine, the uh, Micro Amiga 1, which is a machine that I bought back in 2005, one of my beloved uh, computers, and works quite well there as well. It is reliable, but not very power efficient, yeah, because it is emulator and um, emulates a PPC uh, CPU on uh, x86. Uh, system right uh, yeah that's that's logical uh, I think but it's uh, I'm impressed by the the speed that it has I need to try on Morphos uh, PowerBook yeah the light Excel has uh, also a version for Morphos um, of course the light Excel against uh, editors like uh, which one the cubic id for example it's slower because it is not a native application it is a native application for amiga os4 but it is based on sdl uh, sdl is pretty fast on our systems but it is not that fast like uh, a pure native application that uses only the api of the system right uh, but uh, that's my my editor of choice. I think I had a, I have done um, an extended uh, stream uh, a few months ago, maybe years, <laughs> and uh, you can see all the the, uh, the editors that I have tried and how they are working. Uh, for me, uh, having uh, different tabs and you can move them what, wherever you want, and being able to have. Um, out of the box, for example, here, uh, where is it? Uh, color syntaxing for Lua scripts. Uh, I have made uh, plugins that support Amiga Guide uh, files and uh, Hollywood files. You can have uh, color syntaxing for them. And also being able to have things like uh, here, I have a, a, a the code of a color and that shows me the color as well or uh, if you are working on html for example this uh, feature is quite uh, useful 
as the LCPU hungry. Uh, uh, yeah, it is. It is. It it is uh, more CPU hungry than if you made that application uh, on Amiga OS uh, with the API of the Amiga OS. Uh, but it has a lot of uh, features that I love having and all these features because LatexL is ported by other systems uh, you can have the LatexL on other systems as well in Linux, uh, Windows and Mac OS and um, you can have the same experience uh, also because it is pretty close to how VS Code is working uh, many things are pretty much the similar. For example, if you have um, here, you mark a, a, a word. You see, uh, all the similar words are marked. If I do Control D, I can mark and have multiple cursors here to do to make changes. That is uh, quite useful if you want to mark these uh, uh, words and change them all together whatever you want. Things like that is, for me, it's quite uh, uh, powerful. Or you have um, marking in the brackets and the parentheses that uh, you can uh, use. But one other thing that uh, I use a lot is uh, markdown files. I don't know if you know the markdown files, but these are text files that have some kind of formatting, right? Uh, you can set with uh, the hash here, this first line is um, a title, a big title. Then if you have uh, two hashes, it's a smaller title. Amiga Gamer says, I use SDL2 a lot in Linux ARM, very easy to port applications across. Exactly, exactly. And I don't know, how many applications are based on SDL like this uh, Light Excel? Uh, I, I am interested if you know any other application that um, is based on SDL, like uh, GraphX. We have a port uh, for Amiga OS 4 of GraphX, which is uh, uh, an art uh, painting uh, tool. Markdown reminds me of a simple HTML. Exactly, it's a simple like a simple HTML, for example, these three uh, apostrophes, back apostrophes, are uh, saying that I'm starting um, a code block, right? And you have uh, three hashes for even smaller uh, headers. Now, there is a plugin for Light Excel because you see that here, but you don't see exactly how this is. Uh, that looks. Markdown is used by websites like GitHub. For example, all the README files in GitHub are based on Markdown. So uh, here it, there is a, a plugin that says Markdown Show Preview, for example. And that I did some changes on that to to work quite well for Lin for uh, Morphos and uh, Amiga OS. You open that on Odyssey. And that, after it loads, where is it? Let me try again. Mark down, show preview, and Odyssey. Yeah. What? Oh, God. That seems it doesn't work. I have to check it. You see, that's why these streams are useful. Usually, usually uh, what it, it was happening, um, that uh, plugin loads the markdown and shows a preview here of the markdown and then I will have a look at why this is not happening, possibly because it uses a GitHub uh, URL, as you can see. Maybe they changed something in GitHub. Something they changed in GitHub and this is not working quite well. 
Anyway, I'm going to find it. Um, but the thing is, it shows you the markdown when it works. Uh, and then from uh, the Odyssey, you can say save as PDF. And then you have uh, your markdown as a PDF to share with anyone you want. And uh, you can even create manuals like that pretty easy because the markdown the other thing that is quite useful for markdown is that we can have that in your with your code uh, in a repository in git for example if you are doing development so you can cr keep uh, tracking of uh, changes um, if you make a change you have uh, all the historical changes in the git and it is quite useful Amiga Gamer says Hugo Static Side Generator uses Markdown and Tomato. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, because the Markdown files are pretty easy to understand and to work with them. And a lot of people are using that. Um, I will have a look on that and uh, see how I can fix it. Otherwise, if uh, uh, GitHub did uh, crucial changes that are not useful, uh, are not able to be used by uh, anymore in our systems. I'm going to fix it, make my own website to do the previews. I will see. The other thing that I would like to show you is, you know that um, our systems, uh, Amiga OS 4, Amiga OS 3 as well, and uh, Morphos are not uh, supporting uh, Unicode uh, encoding. Uh, we still uh, use ISO encoding, and this is problematic when we exchange files with other systems. Uh, they need to support that encoding, otherwise the, the characters are broken, and also if you get some file, a text file from another system, you, the Amiga uh, should support it. Uh, otherwise, there's no way to, to use it. Uh, for example, I have a problem when I have a, a movie and the uh, subtitles are in Greek. Uh, I get that file, but I can't use it in Amiga OS 4 because I need to uh, switch the encoding from the Unicode to ISO 8859-7 which is the encoding for the Greek uh, language so the and a lot of people asked me how they can uh, type uh, their own uh, characters in uh, light Excel uh, in German for example they have uh, these uh, umlauts that they want to use and light Excel because it is coming from another system that uh, supports only Unicode. Um, there is a plugin that someone created that you can do um, encoding changes on files, which uh, was not working on our system, but I, I took and made all the changes to, sub to, to work quite well. So let me show you that. If I go, first of all, I need change the encoding the the language in my system and add uh, Greek and English save let me do a fast reboot so everything is working on the new language and Although that I know that it's uh, it will all be Greek to you, uh, it is interesting to, to have a look because I don't know how to write German, for example. And uh, it's a, it's a good way to see these uh, kind of changes, which means that with that change we can uh, now um, take a text file and uh, do a, a a change of the encoding. So if I start the light Excel and create a new uh, document, 
I can write English, okay? But if I want to have uh, to change to Greek, the second light is Greek, okay? It says good morning to everyone, although it's not good, uh, morning right now. Uh, but you see here the Greek uh, flag up, up uh, on the bar, and if I change to uh, US, I can still right uh, now if I choose to save it uh, let's say in RAM uh, test we have this new file here and if I open that you will see the second line, it's all broken because this editor, this the notepad, doesn't support Unicode and that file is in Unicode right now. So if I want to make it um, right, to work right, what I need to do is uh, type in the menu encoding, sorry, encoding, and there are some uh, options like change encoding. Okay, change encoding, ISO, the quick one, select, and now if I save it and double click, you see the same text here. Because right now the text is again saved uh, in ISO, and it, if I open that in a notepad, I will be able to to see it just fine let me add some more Greek and save it when I click on here you see that the text already added so if I make changes in another application for this file, the, the changes are already coming uh, into Light Excel as soon as you click on the window, it takes the focus. Um, now, if I want this file, which is an ISO file, okay, and want to change it to uh, another to Unicode again. Uh, what I need to do is uh, change encoding to Unicode UTF-8, which is the most common I used, and the file now is saved again in Unicode. And then I can uh, send it to someone else to to use it if I if he needs. Now the um, let's say that I'm. I'm loading that file for the first time here. Okay, you can see that the file is not uh, loaded correctly. And the reason for that is that whenever you open a file in Light Excel, it's, uh, it checks the, uh, the encoding of the system. And the, my system right now, because I changed to uh, Greek, it's ISO 8859-7, you can see that at the bottom here. So it tries automatically to open that file in that encoding. And uh, because that file is Unicode, uh, that fails. So the, the solution for that is uh, to load uh, reload with uh, encoding and select the uh, the Unicode and as you can see here all the text is again fine if I save it again uh, change encoding to ISO 80 
this one to click and then reload it from RAM you will see automatically that it works just fine and that's one uh, feature that works as well on Morphos the code that I did there is um, for Amiga OS 4 it uses the uh, car set uh, library if I remember correctly the code set library uh, where is it? yeah code sets library um, and for the Morphos it uses a, a library that comes with the operating system and is uh, called car sets so it, the code that does all this stuff is native code uh, using the API for these operating systems and yeah this is I'm pretty proud for that because uh, I was trying to load some files some code files with uh, uh, some uh, weird umlauts uh, in there and uh, light excel couldn't uh, show them so with that change and that is going to be in the next uh, version which I'm, I'm planning to release uh, uh, this month uh, this is going to be available for everyone to use Actually, right now, uh, doing this um, uh, change of uh, the encodings between text files, I'm not aware of any other application that does that. But if you guys know anything, please let me know. Because I might be wrong. Let's put some music. How does that sound to you? Is that um, interesting at all? And that's all the things that I would like to show you today. The, the, the next part of this uh, stream is going to be more on my plans of what I'm going to show in the next um, uh, next streams so let me move this one I'm planning to, to have more no, not there Here. Uh, I'm planning this time in the streams to have uh, uh, topics that are more hardware oriented uh, I don't know if you could uh, be interested on something like that um, so I'm going to start showing what I have in my mind first of all if you have seen my previous uh, the older uh, streams you probably remember this beauty my classic uh, Amiga the 1200 uh, you have seen that uh, open a lot of times in this stream uh, but since then I have done a few changes for example you, could see, you can see this uh, SCSI device the rabbit hole uh, from rabbit hole computing this is the Zulu SCSI Compact RP2040 this is a SCSI device that uh, uses an SD memory uh, and can be connected uh, to a SCSI connection if you remember my Amiga, let me remove this and the keyboard, like that, I think you can see it. My Amiga has a Blizzard 1230 and that has the SCSI add-on on top with some memory and I never used this uh, SCSI connection. I had before uh, a way to connect only an external uh, CD-ROM. And then I was thinking, okay, how can I do the uh, hard disk access faster on this system? The ID is one way, is the internal ID is something that has can get up to 1.2 megabytes per second, maybe less, especially on uh, 
CPU uh, when the CPU is uh, doing some other stuff, for example, you open a web site and the CPU is usage is high. This uh, the the speed of the hard disk might fall a little bit. Then I added, I tested and added some fast data, but the fast data okay, it gives you some good speed I, I've been uh, I managed to get up to almost uh, 7.5 megabytes per second but uh, because of the lack of uh, DMA when the CPU is high the usage of the CPU is high the fast data drops down to the base uh, speed of the uh, ID of the internal ID so and it was difficult to have that here because it is under the the uh, keyboard and it doesn't fit quite well uh, especially if you have some other stuff here like the the solar board that you can see over here maybe you can see it or not um, this is difficult to, to fit so I tried the uh, SCSI uh, solution with a SCSI device and I got up to 8.5 uh, uh, megabytes of speed which on um, a high CPU usage doesn't drop that much it drops around 7.8, 7.6 megabytes per second which is fine it's much faster than the IDE and it is a sky solution so my plan for the next streams is to make this uh, better looking inside to to uh, put everything in a in a proper way. I have uh, bought a few stuff that are going to help me in that um, um, journey. So here I have a subway, okay, that gives a uh, USB support. I have the Indivision Naga and I have also the Prisma Max uh, so what I'm going uh, I bought one uh, uh, internal uh, board that as you can see is uh, in a do it yourself uh, <laughs> uh, status which is able to uh, connect the individual the USBs and some um, uh, jack uh, audio jack uh, connectors here and uh, have them all at the back of the Amiga the HDMI that it gives uh, it's a mini HDMI a micro HDMI something like that I have all the parts here but I need to, <laughs> to solder them uh, that micro HDMI scares me a little bit but I will try to, to make it work and if that works uh, with the Indivision and everything it's going to be great uh, uh, Falcon says I see you have Prisma, USB, Indivision, Solas, Clock Port Expander yeah enough uh, stuff so that's why i removed the drive i need to fit everything here uh, SCSI is amazing i didn't know if it existed for uh, a1200 uh, your a1200 has more chips than it didn't <laughs> yeah yeah Chito, thanks yeah the the SCSI is on uh, the blizzard uh, as uh, falcon mentioned and that thing it's going to help me uh, remove the uh, connectors that I have right now for the Prisma and move that to this uh, board and for that let me put everything back for that what I plan also to do is to get this SCSI internal somewhere here in the place of the drive with the SD uh, from the side of the, the drive so that I can remove it without opening the uh, Amiga if I need to 
Uh, so this needs uh, a base uh, to design and uh, print the base that it can uh, go and sit on that and be stable which I already started uh, designing that's my first 3D stuff that I'm going to, to make uh, already started doing that and need some measurements and I have uh, I'm planning to put uh, except uh, the for the SCSI uh, put places to add the the subway for example sitting somewhere there the uh, prisma sitting somewhere that is going to be more stable than being uh, floating inside the connector and also I'm designing to add this uh, board let me open that you might have seen that from uh, other um, youtube uh, developers that uh, use it rob smith is uh, presented that uh, board i don't know let me put it here this is called uh, bus mx and uh, this little board um, enhances a lot the uh, the sound of the Amiga. I used it uh, from the external RCA, RCA and the, the uh, sound that comes out of this uh, little module is uh, very good, very good. It's tr the, the, uh, the difference is uh, huge because it uh, enhances the bus and also does a mixing between the two channels uh, having that more uh, giving that a, 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 be a better body in the the sound that you hear so games uh, that uh, is used by anything that comes out of polar so games demos everything is going to be uh, enhanced the sound of them and I don't want to have that floating outside, so I'm planning to have that inside. So one more th uh, thing that is going to go into that base that I'm designing. The idea for that is to get the sound of the Pola from the Arsia from the other uh, under the the motherboard of the Amiga, and uh, with the cable. Uh, bring it to this side and connect it directly to the uh, bus MX to this uh, board and the sound of that go to the other board that I showed you earlier in at the back of the Amiga uh, this way everything is going to be uh, inside the, the Amiga without uh, worrying if uh, it's going to break the RCLs are going to be usable without any problem but it will be better to get the the audio from the uh, jack that i'm going to make and uh, the the audio is going to be much better um, that's my plans for this amiga as you can understand i need to remove everything from that so that i can solder all the uh, the, the, the sound under the RCRs and then build everything but this needs first to build the the board that is going to sit uh, under the, the 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 external behind the external the back plate uh, for the Amiga and be sure that this is working with the uh, individual at least um, that also takes connection for USB so the subway is going to be connected there and all the uh, extra connections are going to be available and also the output from the Prisma is going to be there so if I need to listen to uh, music for mp3 uh, from mp3 files or org files that are, are executed by the Prisma uh, I will need to, to switch the, the jack to the other uh, uh, output and it's going to work just fine. 
that's the big plan for this Amiga. Uh, and this, I plan to, to have that um, in the streams. I don't know if you would be interested to see something like that and me burning my Amiga in front of you in live. Uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Uh, some things I'm going to do them offline. For example, this board that I showed you earlier, it's going to happen offline because the the soldering there is pretty small and uh, it will need some uh, attention. <laughs> Thanks, Falcon. Yeah, it's going to be fun because you can't you don't see usually uh, streamers burning their hardware, this kind of hardware, right? So if if I ruin it, maybe this. Uh, it's going to be quite laughable for all of you. Yeah, I'm going to do them all the modifications uh, live. It's not going to happen in one stream, I guess, uh, because it is a big plan, a, a, a lot of changes. The I need to finish the 3D print for the the base, so this is going to happen offline. And uh, after this is done, we can uh, see the how like I will place everything there. I don't know. Would it be uh, interesting for you to see the process? Hello, Aris Amiga. Welcome to the stream. Would it be uh, interesting for you to see the process of designing that uh, uh, 3D uh, printed uh, part for the Amiga? If if yes, I can do that online and uh, work all together to, to make it uh, make it happen. It is the first time I'm designing something like that and it's going to be also laughable. So the other thing that I'm planning to do in these uh, streams is to play with one more uh, upgrade that I bought a few weeks ago. And I'm sure you have seen that in uh, many different uh, videos. And that's this little uh, board, which is a PyStorm uh, Light 32, I think it is called, right? Yeah, PyStorm 32 Light. Uh, I have a, a Raspberry Pi. Uh, 3B plus, which I don't use anywhere, so I bought this to to use it on one of my other 1200. Uh, I haven't plugged it yet. I have seen a few stuff here and there about it, and uh, it is interesting to see how well it works um, during the the uh, streams i'm going to do the installation the, uh, how I'm, I'm going to build that uh, ex uh, expansion the the pi storm with the uh, raspberry pi i'm going to do the installation together uh, i'm going to not use any ready-made uh, distribution out there that uh, supports pi storm uh, but I'm going to start from installing a basic uh, Amiga, uh, Amiga OS 3.2 and uh, that's at least my plan, <laughs> we will see, because uh, I don't feel comfortable to use um, distributions that uh, were made from others, I want to build that myself and do it the way that I like these uh, systems uh, to be set up. So uh, I'm going to, to have uh, to start building this, this one. Uh, and, and I hope that is interesting to you as well. Of course, you can find a lot of information out there about how to set up this, uh, but I would like to do it. And uh, doing that online on the stream is also interesting for me. Uh, 
Falcon says I have also many things but no time. I, I agree with you, time is limited, that's why I'm doing them on stream because two things at the same time. I'm going to burn my Amiga and you are going to have uh, some good time on that. <laughs> send them, uh, see to says, send them to George. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't, I don't want any extra stuff. I have plenty of them right now to start uh, tinkering with. Uh, and also one other thing that I had in my mind to maybe it is interesting for you as well. Um, I have uh, uh, a Blizzard PPC, Power PC, that I have since. 1997 I think uh, that was my first uh, interaction or the first time that I used uh, PowerPC on Amiga and uh, I have that with a uh, B-Vision maybe it would be interesting for people to see when you have that kind of hardware what can you do on a classic Amiga uh, what kind of uh, applications can use that and uh, maybe it's something that I can do in uh, one of the next uh, streams you have a, a, a blizzard ppc falcon good good yeah I just uh, a week ago I just uh, ordered uh, some extra memory for that I have right now something like uh, 128 megabytes even a little bit more uh, but one of the sims that I was using on that unfortunately died and uh, last week I think I ordered two uh, new sims from US that are 128 uh, megabytes each uh, to get it to, to the maximum and see if they are working maybe maybe they are not working even on the Amiga but I hope they will your main Amiga is uh, PPC great okay you can help me on uh, my next streams on what can be used uh, with the PPC actually I was looking in in um, making a game to work on warp os and maybe power up Th this is something that i have in my mind i'm trying to build the development environments for that uh, maybe if someone has one of these uh, systems could uh, use i game with that uh, so that uh, everything happened much faster cool and the last but not least of my projects that I would like to discuss with you is this one which I don't know if you can see it is a really wide PowerBook G4 not PowerBook I, iBook I think it is called I think it's iBook yeah uh, G4 which I bought in terrible condition uh, because it was filthy and uh, really dirty uh, but at least it was not broken in any place as you can see it's in very good condition from that no bro breaks and um, no scratches even at the bottom and exactly Falcon is for Morphos, or, uh, Morphos this one uh, it even has the rubber feet, <laughs> which I haven't seen in any uh, uh, laptop from this era. I the battery, it still holds uh, the holds charging. It is not visible right now, but it holds charging uh, for even if you don't use it it still remains charged uh, which is also something unique to find right now for this kind of machines and inside it looks pretty nice so it has a break here only uh, here in this part of the, the screen 
uh, I plan to to remove it and uh, then glue that somehow and keep it uh, stable, more stable. But uh, the rest of this, uh, the, the keyboard and everything is working fine. So, as part of these uh, streams, I'm planning to do to upgrade the memory to the maximum that it gets, to remove the internal hard disk with a SSD hard disk, uh, and do that uh, online uh, on the on the stream, and also install the Morphos and see how it works. I found also the uh, dongle that you can add at the side and give uh, VGA output. So whatever uh, I can see here, you can see it on the, from the um, uh, for, from my capture uh, device and be able to to share that path with you as well, because things like that uh, are possible to be found in a good condition or not, but uh, people might w would like to see how they can transform such a computer to a very good Morphos system. And how good it's going to be, we are going to test it uh, on this stream. So these are some of the projects that I have in mind for the stream. It's going to be more hardware or oriented, maybe, than only software. In between we are going to see software, definitely, because uh, myself I'm using a lot my Amiga so I like to uh, use any software that is possible there to fulfill my needs. For example the Light Excel was one of my needs for the Amiga OS to have a, a very good editor and modern editor. So that's why I'm doing the porting and encoding on that. And uh, yeah, uh, that's a few things that I'm planning for the for the future. Uh, I hope it is they are going to be interesting for you as well. I hope to keep on <laughs> with the streams. I will need, of course, your uh, help on that. Um, please. Uh, I don't know if you remember I was saying that into in my oldest uh, streams that I want this to be uh, a conversation, an open conversation on what I'm doing uh, with you, uh, if you have questions about anything and I am able to, to answer them because I might know a solution or something, feel free to uh, through questions through the chat uh, at me. Uh, Falcon says that he has an iBook G4, good. Uh, I need to change the mainboard on them because it hard disk does not work all. Okay, the mainboard, the whole mainboard has a problem or the, they usually have that uh, f flat uh, ribbon connected to, to with a hard disk. So, are you sure that this is not the problem? You built you put the Morphos from USB, eh? right? I have another uh, G4 power book, a big one, uh, 17 inches. Probably you remember that from the older Morphos streams that I was doing. Uh, that I'm using that for programming as well and uh, for Morphos, of course, and testing software there. I came, I tested there. The Light Excel I tested there. Some of the uh, games that I did, uh, some ports I tested there, and uh, that's how I'm supporting uh, the Morphos. I also use uh, Morphos on my X5000, the one that uh, I have right now uh, in front of me, and uh, but it is uh, it has some. Um, uh, I have some problems on switching from Amiga OS 4 to Morphos, uh, which has to do with the KVM that I'm using right now. Because uh, during the boot, uh, the KVM is not supported, so I can't change the boot and I need an external other uh, keyboard whole mess. So uh, right now I'm using the PowerBook 
for development, which I'm connecting to the HDMI of the monitor and I have it there and I love it. Cool, cool. Um, that's all I had for uh, today actually to discuss with you. I think the test stream uh, went quite well. Uh, I hope that you are interested on what you have seen uh, today. Um, before I say goodbye, let me tell you that um, I'm going to keep on Fridays doing those streams. Uh, I was thinking for other days, but uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, Twitch streamers doing Amiga stuff in the rest of the day, so I didn't want to have a conflict with uh, the times, and the Fridays are working quite well for me, so but if you have any proposal for another day, uh, please let me know and I could consider that. Um, thank you all for being here. Thank you for coming into this uh, stream without even, I didn't even announce it anywhere and you, you were here. Thank you so much for that. Uh, I'm grateful for having you here. Um, I hope it is interesting. Uh, if you want to uh, follow all the things that I'm doing uh, for the uh, Amiga and Amiga OS, uh, Morphos and uh, the classic Amiga OS, of course, uh, you can have a look on my blog post in my coffee page, which is uh, coffee.com slash Volcero. And uh, I, I post a lot of stuff there, for example, the changes that I did uh, for iGame and the mockups that I uh, showed you earlier, you can see blog posts there, how I thought of them, how they are going to work, and things like that. And also, I have some um, now and then I'm doing some other blog posts about benchmarking and things that might be interesting to, to, to people. So, if you want to follow that, uh, please have a look on, on my. Uh, uh, coffee page. Um, thank you again for everyone for being here. Um, I would like to, to thank uh, my supporters, my monthly supporters, which is uh, Breed, Christopher White, Daniel Trixit, and Lika, Emek, Levelord, and Team Grooms. And uh, thank all the supporters of, uh, of mine that uh, donated to my coffee page. And mainly you for being here i hope to see you again in the next um, next week next friday have a great great weekend and see you soon bye bye